Right. It was literally an adapter that went in the closet. The, this is the very first version of Is It Cake? Right. <laughs> no, we had literally <laughs> sold our home, took all the equity out of our home, we bought a screwed. smaller house in your oven. And I was like, this is what we're going to be doing. Yeah, we are so <laughs> like, screwed. Oh, my gosh. Okay, everybody. Welcome to the Make Trades Great Again podcast. Andy and Eric here with some special guests. Andy, you want to introduce them? Sure, sure. We're here with your wife, Heather, the lovely Heather. Yeah. As everyone on the IG knows her. And we're here with uh, my wife, Cheryl. Not just, the not lovely present Cheryl. On the is lovely Cheryl, I yes. I always say, yes. just FYI. She's not present on Instagram, so it's fine. <laughs> She's an Instagram stalker, right? She watches. She I doesn't watch. participate. There you go. Exactly. I, I too, like to watch. <laughs> okay no we got that out of the way everybody welcome uh thanks for listening in today today we'd like to talk about uh that that kind of cool question you know if you could go back in time and give yourself some advice what would it be and in this time it would be back when you guys uh or when we started our businesses right, right. separately but we started our business at kind of about the same time a lot has changed since then, and you've learned a lot, uh, all of us, whether we're running our business day to day or we're helping in the business, making sure things uh, succeed and go the right way. We could go back and give ourselves some kind of advice. Oh, I would hope so. What would it be, though? I want to hear from both of you, Heather and Cheryl, what it would be to give yourselves or him or the two of you as a couple advice yourself included uh if you were able to go back in time andy what would it be for you i think uh one of the things that in i don't know i'm going to say year up to year two three something like that was spend uh more focus more during the day during the work hours getting my paperwork squared up yeah um i spent a lot of time in the evenings mm -hmm. and on the weekends doing paperwork when I should have been spending time with family. Yeah. It's easy to get behind <clears throat> do that even now though. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Like what, I, I mean, you, you say yes, but what, like, what is, what, I mean, what have we changed? What, what did we, what have we do? Ugh, I might spit it out. What are we doing differently now that reduces that paperwork then? Does that make sense? Like, how are you staying on top of it now that's different from that? I would say the program that we use now, the HCP program. The software, mm -hmm. things like that. Putting things like that into yeah, that's, that's play. Long ways. Because has, you're not doing each item, you have them itemized mm -hmm. already and you pick and choose for the job. And everything is right there. Yeah. It's not where we don't miss things like we used to. You know, you've seen a separate program that you're, you know, maybe sending a estimate out on or you're not right going to a, pick up an estimate okay we well now we got to turn this into a job but we're using something else for that that kind of thing yeah it's all within one program well mm -hmm. i think largely i mean at that point i mean the first two years I, i'd prior to starting a business i didn't know anything about quickbooks sure right i never took any classes on quickbooks uh -huh. it was like oh crap they tell me i, I got to use quickbooks yeah. <laughs> yeah i could do this with a pen and paper that seems dangerous yeah or i could do it on a computer software and uh, you know i mean we started out just kind of taught ourselves how to use it watched a bunch of youtube videos a bunch of online stuff i would have definitely taken a quickbooks class oh yeah that we did not do yeah so there's some good I advice i did take a quickbooks class but not for our business so i had some experience going into it but eric had to learn from the start yeah and Without it wasn't any prior yeah. knowledge yeah I had, to, I had to learn from ground zero yeah. yeah. How many times did you screw that up? Oh, so many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, not knowing what to charge, but also like not knowing where the money in QuickBooks was supposed to be allocated to and things yeah. like that. But well, just not realizing that he had to document all the things down because, you know, you need to know actually how much it costs you to do the job to know if you're actually making money. Yeah. And he didn't always have, he, Oh, it's about this much in parts. No, how much is it in parts so we know how much we're making? 
Yeah, that or was not big, making. That was a big challenge. Was for the us. case in a lot of a lot of a lot of those early you jobs. You think you're making like, money, but you're not. I, you know, so this is something that I mean, a lot of people um, may not know. I mean, my first job, the very first job I sold, which started what ninety days before we started business. I mean, yeah. not not that I was actively selling, but I had a job in mind that I had been asked to do once I started business. Right. It's a weird proposition. You know, customer knew that this was what's going on. So it's and like risky business. Right. <laughs> but and somebody we had not worked for. I'd never before. worked for these people. They were ultra wealthy. Right. And I sold the very on the day that I opened business, I sent, click send on that quote. And I sent a quote for seventy three thousand dollars on the very first morning in business, like mind boggled. Like the weeks weeks leading up to that. It was probably like half stress too, by the way. Well, and at that uh, point, <laughs> did you think, all right, I already did seventy thousand dollars in business. I'm rocking it, not well, thinking how much you have to into it. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it was. It was one of those that it was like, oh. But the you know, the the thing that threw me the worst for that is that I had a pretty good idea of what I was going to charge. I didn't know what it cost me to work, right? Because I had never been in business yet. Yeah. You know, we'd bought insurance and bought a vehicle or at that point, but I don't know that at that time we were probably not paying for graphics. We weren't paying for insurance yet for certain. No, probably weren't paying much for office Nothing. work, stuff like that. Well, we hadn't weren't in business yet. You oh, know? Sure, so it yeah. was like I just took what the company that I was working for, I was like, well, they're charging eighty dollars an hour. I should charge eighty dollars an hour and I don't have any idea what my hourly rate is. Yeah. Right. I don't I no clue. I mean, working for a very well established large company that's very rooted into the community to me, myself, you know, and and my wife, you know, like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna go do this massive control job sure on a i don't know what it was well i mean the ranch sold for 22 million dollars yeah like you didn't five years enough. later yeah no right way. now so no. cheryl let me ask you this though so you lived through that and you were working outside of the business but also you know very much involved at the time at least the things have changed since then you're basically running the business now so like if you were to look back at that do you remember that do you remember how things started that way like that first job does that have any do is that yeah you recall that i yeah i recall andy baking the parts in my oven and not knowing if he knew what he was doing oh my gosh <laughs> yeah i had to build some circuit Hoping boards for the best yes. oh my gosh because yeah. it didn't the job didn't work yeah right like i we did so this job was it was crazy um we put in a uh a, a now obsolete like DD pre-programmed DDC control system yeah. in this house, big house, 31 zones of heat, like 10 zones of cooling, yeah. that massive, you know, 19,000 square and foot you house. put in the kind of pre-manufactured control yeah, package. Yeah, yeah, electronic controls. We converted a lot of it from pneumatics to electronic control. So lots of actuators, lots of like, just build it as you go. And I put all these thermostats in and the homeowner was like, well, we're going to be at our house in Hawaii for like February and March. Yeah. Right. And they came back like the 20th of March or something like that. And so I went and met them the second day they were back and we walked through the house and she, and I said, well, okay, so what do you, I, I need, you've been living here. The house is comfortable. You know, everything's working exactly as I had intended. And she looks at the thermostats that I, that we had installed and she goes, those are ugly. Yeah. Can we do something else? <laughs> and I was like, uh, you didn't I, even know how to answer uh, the question. I don't even, I don't have any idea how to answer the question because yeah. they no, I could, we couldn't do anything else. They were like a room sensor. Sure. They weren't even thermostats. So it's not like I could go pick up some Honeywell T10s and be like, oh, these are really nice and stick them on the wall because they won't work. Yeah. Right. Like nobody else makes anything nicer. Yeah. And I kind of panicked a little bit. And at the time, I had a, another customer that, um, we had been working for that was an electrical engineer for Boeing. Oh, so you got that. And so I'm like, I got to call Don or Tom called Tom. And I'm like, Tom, what do you think? And he's like, well, geez, Hmm. You know, let me think on it. And he calls me back like 20 minutes later. He's like, just put in a relay and a couple of, uh, adjustable potentiometers. 
And I'm like, what? And so we started drawing this thing out. I'm like, yeah, no, that would work. And we literally, so I had to take and build 31 zone control boards that had two relays, two adjustable potentiometers on them so that you basically had an occupied set point and an unoccupied set point. Yeah. And if the heat was on, it was occupied. If it was off, it was unoccupied. And we basically fooled the DDC control system into thinking that it was cooler or warmer in the room. By using your oven in the kitchen. Well, parsley. so I had to make the circuit boards. I soldered all the, the relays on, all the potentiometers, and then I had to uh, heat trace. I used a trace, this uh, thing that was called a silver trace pen, literally on the kitchen table and, and drew traces on all these circuit boards to make the all of them the right, 31 times. And then we had to bake the board. In your oven. In the oven. <laughs> Congratulations. We, we're more beautiful than what she had on the wall to start with. We literally. Well, had... No, we put regular honey oh. thermostats <laughs> wait, wait on the wall. Wait a minute. Like point, you baked yeah. something that looks better no, than you could buy. It was literally an adapter that went this in the closet. The, this is the very first version of is it cake. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we had literally sold our home, took all the equity out of our home, we bought a make smaller house in your oven. And I was like, this is what we're going to be doing. Yeah, we are so <laughs> like, screwed. Oh my gosh. And I'm in and, 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 and at the same time, like I said, I mean, we this was the first job, right? You know, the first months. I did this. So we started business January 1st, 2011. And I started this job uh, February 1st uh -huh. and finished it March 1st. So it took me a, basically a month of driving up there in, in the winter uh -huh. to this house by myself, pulling wire, pulling cable, hooking up a d devices, Every night, making sure the heat was back on though, while it was vacant, you know, ha massive house in the mountains. Did you work like super late hours early on um, like, into the night? Is that I, something you did a lot? We had very, very small children too. And it was, it was a, it, <laughs> that like was the, three. yeah, first two years was, I would say really hard. And he worked. Yeah. Late nights, a lot of late yeah. pulling into the driveway at 11, mm -hmm. 12 o'clock at night. Or yeah. in the office till 10 yeah. o'clock at night. Come home, eat dinner, and then go to the office. Yeah. How about you, Heather? Did did I do a lot of that? Yes. I think in the beginning, that was part of the problem is managing the time and how much time things are going to actually take to do it so that you do have a little bit of family life outside of work. That would be yeah. my best piece of advice for somebody starting a business is that you have to find your family work time. Yeah, you have to be able to balance that. It's yes. not easy. It's not easy at all. I feel like in our our scenario, Eric did make time. Like he would carve out a little bit of time for the boys and I, and then he would go back. Like he would come home and have dinner with us and then go work again. Or he would, we would bring dinner to the job site and have, you know, I mean, <laughs> it wasn't fun family time but he was we made that time yeah. but not like we should have but sometimes you you can't necessarily have both and you do have to be driven to make it go to the next step but you you there's a reason you're trying to make money and it's for your family so if you're right. avoiding your family then that's a problem too you have to have a little bit of a balance yeah we used to we used to have a lot of dinners together and it was back when the boys were, you know, going to bed pretty early kind of thing. So maybe I'd be able to hang out with them a little bit before the end of their day yep. happened. But that would kind of oftentimes if it were busy season, winter time, things like that. If I And I did a lot of new construction early on. So uh, if I didn't get done that day, it might mean that I went back and did a few more hours. Yeah, in the in the headlights or in the, in a work light or something. Yep. Yeah, in summertime, obviously, it was always better for that, you know. Yeah. But then what would happen in summertime is often I'd work until it got dark, or too dark, you know, and maybe that's like ten thirty at night where you're like, oh my gosh, I got to pick up my stuff or I'm going to leave something here and lose it. Right. Not even thinking like I had to stop because I should rest, but because I thought the more I got done, the more money I'd make and the more happy people would be not waiting for me. I was really scared early on to hold up the jobs mm -hmm. yeah. and it would prevent me from taking on some jobs that I probably could handle. But I thought, oh my gosh, what if, you know, I've heard about this contractor and if you're late, they, <laughs> they don't pay you or something. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't want to get myself into that, but you know, when we built our house that we're recording in right now, 
for years after that. We well during the process we traded a lot of labor. I mean, we made agreements just with the subcontractors that helped us build this house that uh, in trade I would do the value of work they did, but for them plumbing or heating. And that was to keep our mortgage down. And that was a lot of late nights because it would always have to be when it could fit it in because there really no wasn't getting paid for the job. You yeah. know, I had already got paid by the guy doing the tile on the floor or something. Right. You know? And so that was another thing that just kept me. I just, I think I just set myself up for that. I didn't mind working late because I thought that's what it took. You always were told by people that ran their own business, like, you got to work like every day of the week. You can't let anything go by you, you know? Right. Yeah. You got to get every dollar that's out there. Yeah. You do have to work hard yeah. and you have to put the effort in, but you have to have the balance. I mean, it's not really a balance. There's always things that come up that you have to take care of, but you do have to make time for your family and stuff because money is not important if you don't have anybody to spend it with and a life to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. One, yeah once you've bought that island. <laughs> you know, what are you going to do now? You better have somebody to share it with. Right. Yeah. I, you know, I think that's one of the things that like we, it, it took us a while to learn it. And it, and I, I guess I have to give some of it, uh, you know, some thanks or some credit to travel soccer because ultimately it was, that you is know, what made us stop. Yeah. And yeah. that, that was our family time. Right. Was, that was the only time that we were like, we're leaving town. I'm not working. Yeah. And at the time, I didn't have an iPad. I didn't well, have like connected phones, not like we do today. Right. It was not an option for Andy to miss Paige's game. No. Like it was not an option. No. It was, hey, there's a game at four. Okay. I'll, I'm picked up at 310 and I'm headed home to get changed and we're going to the game. And I don't see that that was hard for, I don't think that that was hard for us at all. I mean, if I missed something, it wasn't like, it was like completely out of the norm. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess yeah. something could happen along the way, you know, right? But it was, uh, it like it, we, it's not hard to plan around that. You know what I mean? Like you do. Yeah. You have to do it. You but you also to need to know the word no, because yeah. I can't even yeah. tell you how many times we've get phone call and Andy's on his way to the game and somebody has an emergency. Somebody always has an emergency. Yeah. And. Yeah. It's like, well, they either oh. had to wait. Or find somebody else. Yeah. No, I can't be there for three hours. Right. Yep. And it was very hard. That's very hard to do. But you, it was really important to me that our kids weren't affected by our how much we worked. Yeah. Well, and it's scary to say no because you don't know when the next job's going to come in or who's going to call next, and then you'll be like, "Oh, I turned that job down, and yeah. now no one's calling." Right. I, I mean, I know, Eric, I know you had many of these jobs where you were like, ah, it's this stupid garbage disposal job. I need to go do it, you know, whatever. And then you do the garbage disposal job and then you do a little faucet repair and then the homeowner's like, oh, yeah, we're building this apartment complex. Or I have this lake house that we want to put a new mechanical system in. It's like the the garbage disposal and the leaky faucet were like, we made 30 bucks on it. Yeah. Right. It was nothing. And then you got to the the lake house and you're like, oh, this is, there's some money here, right? Like this, this was a job that they're like, I don't, we don't, we're not even asking anybody else to do it, but we need you to do it. And, and it was, those kinds of jobs were the hardest for me to look at when somebody called, when we were like, oh, I have time. I mean, I guess I could just skip this one soccer game or I could skip this school play. And go take care of this job that because it could turn it. I mean, this Johnny's got big money, you know. <laughs> I might I might get to work at his lake house. Well, don't do that. Just don't. No, <laughs> right? because There's, they might not call you. They, they might, might not, not want no. anything done at their lake house. No. And he may just want a buddy favor for today on getting his disposal hooked up and be pissed that you'd build him 180 bucks. Yeah. I don't think we said no to a lot of things. We should have said no to more. Eric would work till midnight to get it done so he could fit the other things yeah. in. And so then he was burning on four hours of sleep a day and running himself to the ground. So we should have said no. Yeah. <laughs> we were nervous to say no, so I think we didn't say it enough. I think now we've learned that. 
Yeah. So that could be advice. It's just knowing what you're capable of, right? Like you said, make time for family. And that's what we just spend a lot of time talking about. But, and you bring up the, you know, maybe I shouldn't have taken on that job because I had to miss out on something. Or like you're saying, maybe we should have said no to some things that maybe it wasn't quite, I mean, I had done in the past, but I worked for somebody. So like they had all the tools and they had the procedure already set. And like, I had to go out there and like recreate something with nothing. You know, I'd done this in the past. I can handle it. And I'm in, the, I'm over piping about automatic car wash at a gas station as a one man show. Like with no like, tools yet. Like, right. a, yeah, like six months into, you know, owning my business and then without the commercial kind of tools I needed to do the job. And she's in there helping me lay yeah. radiant tubing in the floor at the car wash. Oh, the because, kids are sleeping in the truck. And... Yeah. And it's winter time. And like, it yeah. was just insane. Yeah, I had, we've spent weekends like that. Yeah, there was a couple of couple pull, of jobs pulling pulling, pulling packs, packs and running pipe. You know where it was like it's not a one man job, right? You know, I mean, Eric, you, you, Eric you does have, not think I'm a good apprentice, so I'm still the parts bitch. So <laughs> fine. wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Hey, I think I was when I was in Missoula for you guys. Yeah. I mean, Andy sent me on a parts mm-hmm. run. So yeah, I didn't say I didn't think you're a good one. I did say you're good looking. But. <laughs> I think you said you you wouldn't want me as an apprentice, but I don't know. Just a, did you know this though? A couple of years ago, or recently, <laughs> yeah, I guess. subject change. Yeah, exactly. Did you know, guys? Did you know that I asked Heather if she wanted to become a plumbing apprentice because she retired from her longtime job? Yeah. You make me seem old. You're the one that goes around telling everybody with a big smile on your face, "I'm retired." <laughs> You're not old, and that's what makes me wonder. Like, you sure you don't want to go back to work? Um, but when she decided she wasn't going to, she was going to leave her job and, uh, spend her time doing, uh, work in both of our businesses on the back end for all the billing and you name it, bookkeeping stuff. I said to her, would you want to become a plumbing apprentice? Because if you had a plumbing license and like got involved with the business, we could become like a woman owned business and we can like win all kinds of work that we're probably being overlooked for. <laughs> right. And like, it would be fun to me for you to be an apprentice and like learn my trade. And like, would it be interesting to you? Because she's just deciding what she's going to do. And what did you say when I asked you that? Like right away, you said, I don't want to work for you. And I spent <laughs> enough time with you already. <laughs> Yeah, she, didn't even, she didn't even say i don't want to be a plumber she's like nah, no i was like no i don't I think that's a good thing. idea at all i'm like i think we i think we do enough together i think i'm involved enough i think our marriage works that way right. i i don't think it would if you were bossing me around every day <laughs> you might you, she thinks you're bossy <laughs> Wait, i'm the bossy one i mean i'm kind of bossy too but <laughs> oh, in a certain God. way yeah I th- I think you know I, over the years I I would find it it would be really hard for me to have gotten to where I feel like I'm at in this business without Cheryl's assistance in this like I mean we it wouldn't have happened Jeez, um, get a room I'm not <laughs> telling you I think it is but, hard for one person I think you have to have whether it's a spouse or you have to have somebody else to rely on yeah. because there's always the person who is, you know, I'm going to get the work done and I think this way. And then there's the person that's like, okay, but we have to budget and we have to figure it out. How much are we making? Absolutely. Are we losing? And one person isn't always good at both of those things. No, no. And and I think that's the big, the big thing from it. Cause from like my standpoint, I'm like, oh, I made, you know, $800 on that job this morning. And I'm, so I made $800. Yeah. And in a lot of cases, you know, we do this, you know, let's say I do that same job every, every day of the week. Uh, sweet. I made, you know, whatever, $4,500 this week. This is awesome. And then I, you know, come and home and I'm Heather like, Cheryl I'm, that says you made $300. You made $300 because <laughs> we had quarterly taxes due this month. Do not go spend all that money on tools. <laughs> exactly. Right? Right? exactly. On tools? <laughs> We've never been known to spend any money on tools. I don't know what you're talking no. about. Well, that was also a big thing when starting out is we didn't have all the tools needed. Yeah. And the tools we needed were a lot of money at the time. I mean, there's still a lot of money, but we didn't have, we kind of jumped into it. If, you know, we didn't have a savings leading up to it, like this is money we're going to spend on tools and a van and things like that. And so then it was like, you have a job, you have to get the tools, we have to figure out how to get them to get the job done 
to yeah. maybe actually buy the tool. So borrow it or rent it or yep. whatever. Sell your body. <laughs> yeah. That's we why did, I started. We did Instagram. not do that. <laughs> so you buy all the tools, <laughs> all the tools, right? Nobody I, was selling any bodies. Right. I uh I bought a lot of secondhand tools to start with. I bought a lot of eBay tools. Um my pipe freeze machine that I'm still using here 12 days or 12 days, 12 years later, came off of eBay for 200 bucks or something like that. Sure. You know, I think my first Upanor expander came off of eBay. It was a worse bow. Actually, I bought, no, I bought that off of Instagram. Somebody on Instagram was selling it. It was an old uh, Upanor, worst bow Upanor expander. And I paid a hundred bucks for it or something like that. And that, that thing, I mean, actually a buddy of mine still owns it and still uses it. You traded work for the the Pex coil yeah. machine. Yeah. How many? How many? How many thousands you, of dollars? You is helped that Pex somebody on else on a couple jobs so that you could get that. So we weren't doing it yeah. without it. Yeah, I have the same one. Fold up toolbox. Yeah, yeah. that's very cool. Yep. Okay, so that's good advice. To learn how you know, and there's a lot more to that conversation, but yeah, know what you have to charge and where that money. In, you know, what's co- that money is covering before it's something that you could put in your pocket. Well, or before it's spent. Well, yeah. that is a learning thing, too. It's you're not going to know that the first month you're in. You're going to you're going to work on that as you go. But you're going to say, OK, last month I was building this. And then now that I'm actually looking at it, the parts were this, this and this and insurance. And then you'll you adjust that. And then the next job you do a little bit better and you yeah. do it a little faster and you have it built into there. So you're not going to be great right out from the start like you you probably thought oh they were charging eighty dollars so i'm gonna you know the shop was charging eighty dollars so i'm gonna charge eighty dollars but you know maybe they're doing 20 times more business and they're getting a better deal at the wholesale house than you are and they're not paying as much as you were yeah. so they're you weren't making as much money as they were or their vans paid off and their tools are paid off and, and you're you renting know, yours are aren't their people exactly. are more efficient and they're getting more work done <laughs> well and and likely they exactly on that same concept i was a one man shop they were a 30 man shop building like four hospitals at the same time right yeah, they don't need to cover everything, every yes. dollar with one person. Because well, one how, job might make up for the small job. Exactly. That's yeah. pretty much how I started out too. Yeah, like that's how I feel. Like, well, that's what everybody charges, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, but then we had to. I had to sit down and be like, we really aren't making money in this deal. Like, yeah, you, we should, you should go get a yeah. job. Yeah, I think. <laughs> something. <laughs> well, you know, it's nerve wracking, and you do have moments where you're like, maybe, maybe this wasn't a good idea. Um, I think that weeds out the good business people from the bad business people because you figure out how to get through that if you really want to, to, yeah. to do it. But you're learning as you go. You don't just jump in and you know your pricing and you have your your market down. And, you know, there's certain jobs we knew, like as a one-man shop, it's not feasible for us to compete with the other people. Yeah. So we say, no, nope, here, call this shop. Right. You know, if you have this, consider us again, please. But we're a one-man shop and we don't, you know, it would take us too much time to get your job done i think back to that time where i wasn't sure if i was charging the right amount or even just i didn't know any of this stuff we weren't i'll tell you no i know <laughs> i think back to that time though i'll keep saying that we were not charging enough money well because we weren't charging enough and cash flow wasn't there didn't have anything built up other than what i had to make at the end of the week you know to pay our bills kind of deal uh I think back to, you know, wholesale bills would come due and I was buying from multiple sources and I would like pay, take the money from the most recent payment to pay the oldest host, bill, you know, that wholesale bill. So it was paid off, but like I wasn't. So you could get more supplies for the next job. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like robbing Peter to pay Paul, I think is this thing. Yeah. But, you know, I wasn't tracking expenses per job. I was just like money in should equal money, you know, money in should be more than. That yeah, should be money greater out, than money out. Do, yeah. And I wasn't doing, I wasn't doing all the steps in order to understand that. And so very much to me, when I got paid a hundred dollars to do something, I thought very much like I, I made a hundred hundred dollars. When my brain doesn't work that way. So I would have to explain to his brain, you didn't make a hundred dollars because this, this and that, but we actually lucked out and we had a really good um, guy at a wholesale house that we couldn't pay our bill 
we needed more supplies to do a job to pay the bill. And he made a deal with Eric, like, you know, just give me $100 a week or whatever, and I'll keep giving you supplies until you get caught up. And we honored that and got caught up right away. But had he not done that, that might have been the end of us then because nobody else right. is going to start a contract, you know, an account with you at that point because you owe somebody else and you're behind. And actually, he just retired and Eric went to a thing <laughs> a while ago because Eric remembers he's the guy that helped us out back yeah. in the day. And not every company can do that, but some people are willing to work with you because they understand the struggles. Yeah. And as long as you're making an effort to make that payment and you're continuing to work and getting the supplies they know you're working, they might work with you on it, but you really need to work on getting them paid off first and to yeah. prove that you deserve that. <laughs> Cheryl, do you remember the, uh, uh, Miss Richards' boiler project that was also right around the first time when we first started, and Keller made us get a job account. Do you remember that nasty conversation? I'm mm -hmm. trying to explain the uh, reason why we were putting a lien on her house. Yes. And I didn't know. A lien on your house for the On job? her house. Oh. But, right. <laughs> so I didn't know what a job account meant. And so our, my local manager, very similar, was like, <laughs> you want to buy like, eight thousand dollars worth of parts and your credit account is worth fifteen hundred like you don't have the eight thousand dollars to pay us right now and he's like but here's how we can do this we can make a job account and what keller will do is they will become a lien holder on the house for the amount of the materials to ensure they get paid to ensure that they get paid if right, yeah. yeah something goes wrong on the project and then you don't have to worry about the credit limit you just tell us what you're doing and what the amount of the contract is, and and our attorneys will draft this thing up. And I'm like, sounds great. To you, perfect. That's scary for the lady. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, and so she was. I would going, say no. I will. <laughs> she freaked out. Yeah. She was right? not happy. Right. And I was like, whoa. I don't. I don't know any of this stuff. I, I had no idea. Like I knew what a lien was. Yeah. Right. But I didn't know why. Yeah, because she's thinking you don't pay your bill and I lose my house. Yeah. And it was. It was a. It was touch and go with that job. The job ended up turning out just fine. I got to the end and Keller handed me a lien release. Says, here you go. The job's done. You've been paid. Go get her to sign this. And the lien will go away. Perfect. I walked in, you know, went up to the house, got her to sign this. Hey, here's, here's the lien release. We're all done. You're paid me. I'm paid. You're good. You're happy. I'm happy. Yep. Okay, great. And it was, everything was fine. But that was one of those early jobs where it was like, I don't. I don't have the money to buy this stuff. When you weren't thinking, I don't have enough credit to do a big job like this because I can't right. get the amount of materials that I need. Those right. are the things that you don't know all the time when yeah. you're jumping into something. You go, oh, I want to do this $80,000 job, but I only have $1,500 worth of credit at I the also, house. I also believe that was before we made people pay up, pay front. up front right for their so, materials oh, years so, before i bet right yeah well the, and right. the only time that that was different and the, and this was a that was a weird case the very first job that we were talking about at the beginning of this podcast the big controls job i went to the homeowner before they left for vacation right i went and i sold this job to him had this three inch binder and color pictures and oh man Oh, he was like, organized. Fancy. He was, was all organized. organized and had <laughs> like a jacket. It doesn't happen very often. Oh, I, I had a I had a polo a polo shirt with a printed logo on it. And a yeah. screen, you know, dude, you yeah. are yeah. As soon as you get apparel, you're legit. Yeah, <laughs> you're I had nice show. shoes on, and I showed up at you know at eight o'clock in the morning, and I'm I'm sitting there, and I sold this job to the to the husband, and he's <laughs> like, yeah, this is great, and I think this is going to be really nice, and. All that for a tank water heater, right? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> she comes out of the out of the I don't know wherever bedroom or whatever, and and comes into the kitchen and she's cooking eggs, and I'm kind of like she hadn't introduced herself to me, and I didn't know who she was. I'd never met her before, and she's cooking eggs, and I'm like, okay, well, I assume this is his wife. You know, it's kind of weird. He's not going to introduce me, and well, okay, whatever. We are keep talking, and and she pipes up. She goes, okay, so do you want it all up front now, or how do you want to do this? And it just, it totally derailed everything. Yeah. You know, like I'm super confident I'm going to sell this job. I've spent 90 days building this thing, right? Oh my God. Like reading <laughs> manuals, learning how to do job, this, this project. Studying their blueprints. Studying the blueprints of the house, figured it all out, like re-engineered this house. <laughs> and you're thrown off because she's offering you money, money. before you ask She's like, for do it. you want to check? Yes. And yes, I'm like, I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, you're thinking now. <laughs> no, then, I know. Yeah. And she comes over and I'm like thinking she comes over to the, the, you know, she turns off the burner at the stove and she walks over to the table and she looks down and she's like, how much? And I, so I kind of flip back to the, the pr- proposal section of my binder, you know, it was all yeah. laid out really nice. And I'm like, okay, well, here's what we're doing. And then she goes, I don't really care about that. How much? And there's the total at the bottom, you know, $73,800. She goes, okay. And turns around and writes me a check for seventy three thousand eight hundred dollars. We were very like, fortunate. I had to sell the job. I didn't. No, that very is, fortunate. That is... I didn't get a chance to sell the damn job. <laughs> like I'm working with your husband oh, to sell the job. You. Poor right. you. Know, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but somebody handed you money on the first job. Right. Oh but, my gosh. But it was weird. And then I was like, okay, that's not our money. Right. And that was Cheryl talking right out of the gate. And I was like, well, we but we're gonna make like we're gonna make some money on this. You know? Yeah. And then she was like, no. I still do that to you. Still. Yes. Still to this day. And she was like, that money is not ours until that job's done. <laughs> yes. And the ends. The Something ends could go to, wrong. Yeah. There could be a leak. You might have to spend all that money back. <laughs> you do not spend a dollar of that money until it's yours. I did not track my labor on that job. I can guarantee you we didn't make nothing. Nothing. Oh, probably <laughs> yeah. not. Yeah. Probably not. But you were so excited because it was a big, it was oh, a big it was number. Huge. I mean, did it was it, in the beginning. I say we didn't make anything. Right. That is a hundred percent not true, and I and I wouldn't be truthful to say that. I made a valuable experience of understanding what it meant to have projects that were multiple days, multiple weeks long, and like managing time. Did what did I make? I probably paid myself four dollars an hour. Yeah. By the time it was done, and, Wait, I, and, and the then experience I, and the yes. the fact that you could tell other people, "I did this job." Right. They I, knew you completed it. You did a good job, and you can move on to the next. Yeah. Big it put a big, big, big boost of confidence in in our business mm-hmm. to be able to go up and do this job that I shouldn't have done. Yeah. There's no question I shouldn't have done that. Looking back on it, I wouldn't do it today. So that being, yes, you would. No, <laughs> that being one of your first experiences, <laughs> why didn't you start asking for a down payment? It took From many, year, yeah, no, many you know, years later. We did, we did not as well. It, right. Just because what kind of wasn't a thing back in the day to get half up front or whatever. What made you make that switch? We, I remember coming home I, and I don't, I couldn't tell you when this was. It was probably 18 months or so. I remember coming home and we were, I don't know, we were maybe stressed out. And Cheryl and I, it was after dinner. The kids had gone to bed. Cheryl and I are in the office. And we're talking about, you know, like the business and she's going, hey, you know, we got to pay this bill and you need to collect some money. We don't have the money to collect this. I'm like, what the hell do you mean? I I have worked my ass off for the last three months. Like, how do we not have money? You look at the QuickBooks and it's like, okay, I have have $20,000 worth of bills I need to pay. And there's like $38,000 that people owe us. How do we make this work without... Right. Because you don't want to get behind on... You have a a payment date. Right. But their job might not be done for two more months or another month or whatever. Right. I also think the reverse, when business gets good and you start getting money and you're booked out, that money is in there and you need to be on top of it and diligent that you haven't even started that job yet. They might cancel and want all their money back. They might want – you can't spend money that isn't done in 100% – your profit. I have taught myself over the years, I've been very strategic on when we take payments and what account it goes into and yeah. how you keep track of that. And because I hold it. that used to stress me out. Like well, you cannot spend this money. And I think that's something that's, that's a big benefit to people starting a business today that wasn't as big a benefit 10 years or easier to do 10 years ago is that today you can create multiple accounts and with online banking, just move money as back and forth as needed. Yeah, exactly. there's some cool tools that are right. easier. But like so here's our could... deposit account and here's our yeah. finished job account or you can name them whatever you want. Mm-hmm. I have a tax account for my kids that, you know, don't get 1099 and they have a regular savings account. We have multiple accounts so you don't have to right. do the math like, well, this much is, you know, I got this still going out. Note. And, yeah. Yeah. Which we do a lot of. There's a lot of. There's a lot of that that that, that ends up. That keeps me like organized. Keeping, keeping track. Yeah. yeah. Leave there's my always, post-its yeah. alone. I also yeah. like to, because things were so tight in the beginning, and we did struggle making bills and paying things once in a while. Once the money did start to come in, 
I like to keep a cushion in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like to make sure it makes me feel better. It, I'm not on him. It makes him less stressed. Um, otherwise, I'm like, you need to be getting something in because we yeah. spent it. You know, I don't I don't want to deal with that. Right. I don't want the stress. There's so many other stresses that we can't control. That's one that yeah. we can. Right. Yeah. And I mean, it's not always easy to do because it's like, oh, Mercedes looks pretty nice over there. But um, your peace of mind and knowing, hey, if all of a sudden COVID happens and like yeah. luckily plumbing didn't slow down, but some businesses did. Then you would have something to live off of. For At least the next pay few the bills and pay if you like. We don't have employees, but you have employees, yeah. and you can you can. That was my biggest. You at thing. least have a few months of right. cushion to know. I can figure this out in a few months. I can't figure this out by tomorrow if all of a sudden somebody needs it. Well, there's always money in the banana stand. <laughs> 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 I, I mean, I think we, early on we. I remember Cheryl saying, you know, well, we, you know, well, it wasn't, wasn't so much a conversation before we had employees, but after we had employees, it was, the conversation was, we always have to have minimum 30 days of payroll. Yeah. My, my biggest fear always was, is we, these are, we're responsible for these people's families and their livelihoods of being able to take care of their families. And you don't want to give them Oh, tomorrow you don't have a job. Right. I mean, right. at least you can be like, hey, we can pay you to the end of the month or we can pay you for two more months mm-hmm. and you need you have yeah. that time to find somewhere if if things would go crazy bad. But you don't ever want to be like, sorry, here's your last paycheck. You're wow. on your own. And I'm proud to say that in 10, 12 years that we've we've never laid off an employee because we didn't have the work or enough money to pay them. Yeah. Which is awesome. We yeah. chose not to have employees because that's too much stress for me to worry about my family and somebody else's family. Well, yeah. we don't, well, not just that. We yeah. own another well, business. We do. Yeah. We have to spread our time. Across. There's multiple reasons, but we did get to a point where we had to start turning away business or get an employee, and we had to sit down and have the conversation and weigh out, yeah, what which way it? we wanted to go. And we chose at that time to stay a one man shop, and then we did start another business, mm-hmm. which obviously is helpful, but. Um, I just don't think I want to be responsible for somebody else's family. Right. Like, it's, it's interesting you bring up the layoff part, and I think that's something to be extremely proud of. Uh, I had pride as an employee that I hadn't gotten laid off like for my career going on like 10, 15 years at that point. And then right. I did. I was laid off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 500 people in Minneapolis were laid off on the same day. It wasn't an option. Yeah. And so, you know, not everybody's going to make the cut, right? Right. But there, I also, as I don't think that that's a, I don't think anybody, any business wants to lose or lay off people, mm-hmm. anything like that. All the things you said, I like I said, mm-hmm. it's great. I also don't see, though, that the opposite isn't true. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. If the business needs to do it and it's the yeah. right decision, it is, you know, it's unfortunate. You, you have to act quickly. But as an employee, that. especially in the trades, like we know that, you know, it happens often. And there's really not anything wrong with it. It's, it could just mm-hmm. be a manpower thing, too, right? I don't know if it's a good fit. You do have to make those decisions sometimes to keep the business going, and you will have to lay somebody off. However, our personality and me having worked for a nonprofit for years, there wasn't money for things. So Ani Plumbing and Eric and Heather would buy things. And I feel like if we had employees, we'd be like, oh, and we would take care of their family and not our family because we don't want to be the jerks that let your family down. Mm -hmm. And we will figure out our family and... It's just, I don't think we could, and you either. Like, that's why you haven't had to lay anybody off. Mm-hmm. You've figured it out. Figured You've out. kept yeah. getting work. And I just think it. There were, there's enough life stresses for us with, uh, you know, being young when we were had a young family. To add one more thing to that, being a business owner, having employees, and we just chose not to. It works great for you guys because it did work out. You yep. now have four, three, four employees your business does more business than ours because you have four drop dick mm-hmm. fans out there. But it's just, we just decided at that time, had we not started another business shortly after that, we maybe would have changed our mind by now on that. But 
I don't. I it was still, definitely I scary. It was definitely scary. The first time we, the first guy that it was very scary. Well, and it is scary to have to like say to people, "I'm sorry, we can't do that job. We're booked out. Unless you want to do it in three months, we can't do it." I do that on the people daily. don't want to hear that. No, I know people don't want to hear that. So that's kind of scary too, because in the back of your head, you're always thinking, "What if the phone stops mm-hmm. ringing?" Yep. Okay. Last question. We're this has been awesome. This is really really cool, but. Honestly, and you know, you could add some detail to it if you want. But if you went back in time and you met yourself, would you say do it all over again? Would you do it yourself again? Would you tell them no, go do something else? Or what? That's would a you, loaded what question. Would you do instead, it's not. I mean, do you think it's been? You guys have been successful. We've been successful. You measure that different ways for different people and businesses. But I think we kind of gauge ourselves on probably the same uh measuring stake but you know our separate businesses would you look at everything you did today it's positive it's been positive no doubt but would you do it again it's okay if I, I say it's okay if you say no personally yep. <laughs> I, I, here's here's what I, I guess i would say i would say yes i would probably do it again on the basis that i know that had i continued on the path that i was previously I would not be in the financial situation I am now. Right. It it the business gives us a lot of freedom to do the things that we love, okay. but it also chains us yeah. down. Yeah. To do. I mean, so you can do it, but your phone's still gonna ring when yes, you're on vacation. Yes. And I take the phone everywhere I go. Yep. Like it's chained yeah. to me. Yep. And and I mean, and my our friends and family it. have had to learn that right. Cheryl is going to stop and Answer the phone or return That's messages kind of or do so. It is, it is as part of the trade off. To mm-hmm. this fantastic place, but you're going to answer the phone while you're there. Yeah. I mean, great. Minnesota right. is the best. <laughs> but you're going to answer the phone while you're there, right. but you also can say, nope, today we're closing shop and we're going to graduation. Right. We're going yeah. to, you know, like you can make those decisions as well. We've, we've taken some pretty I guess I'm going to say some pretty fantastic vacations and had some pretty, pretty awesome adventures as a family. I mean, it, including with your family mm-hmm. that we may not have done on our own yeah. working for someone. I don't want that to sound like, oh, you know what? The sky's the limit and, you know, whatever you can go spend and you got all this money to do all this stuff because you were a business owner. That's not it. That's not it. We've worked crazy hard. You guys have worked crazy hard. Yeah. Put a lot of sweat, a lot of equity. A lot of I mean, people if, do it too, and they're successful. It's definitely not for the faint at heart. No, it, it, no. being and, and a business owner in a is family, definitely not. A family business is not easy. I mean, there's there's days when when uh, we've you know what been sitting across the, the desk and it's been like this is a crappy conversation. Neither of us want to be here. Yeah. Right. This is not an easy conversation to have about like how are we going to run this business? How are we going to get this thing back on the tracks? Make things work. These are these are hard conversations. Now, and how are you guys going to stay on the same thought process or come to the same pro- thought process to move forward? I think that a lot of what has helped us over the years too is like when I want to quit, Andy doesn't. But when and when Andy doesn't want to quit or when Andy wants to quit, then I'm like, no, we can get through this. That's hundred yeah. percent us. Yes. Sometimes I'm like, right. f this, we're done, and he's right. like, well, you know, we you get know, to do what we want. Right. Yeah, rarely am I the voice of reason. Right. However, I come up with some good nuggets. Right. Occasionally, while. I'm the one that's like, I don't even know why we do this, and then. <laughs> more often it would be him and then i'm like well you know you get to like go to the kids things you get to travel we get to have another business that interacts with it you know like there's saying there's positives and thank god we're not on the same page when we both want to be right but <laughs> right. well okay no 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 don't stop there I, you have to answer the question if we would do it again yeah i think we would do it again i think the smarter, older version of me would do things differently from the start. Yeah. But I do see the benefits. I mean, I think it takes two different kind of people. Like, not everybody is meant to be a business owner. Exactly. Not everybody has the, I don't know how to say, it, like, you know, the motivation drive. to, in the drive to go out there and do what it takes. I think if you know it's going to be hard work, you're going to do some suffering, but then you're going to get, this the reward. little reward. 
I think it's worth it. I think some people think, oh, you have your own business. You get to leave whenever you want. You can take the day off tomorrow. You can do, you can't. If you take tomorrow off and then you take the next day off, then now you have no customers and now you have no money to do the things that you want right. to do. You have to be driven to push in. And we're never content. Like business, <laughs> right. you know, I mean, not that we're not happy and like, but we're always like, oh, hey, we did this What's this next? year. Next year we should do X. We should add this in we should yep. do drain cleaning now we should you know and we we always want the business to go to the next level in everything we do to go to and i think that's what makes a business owner from somebody who thinks they can be a business owner that mm -hmm. entrepreneurial skill of being like i think we can make money here mm -hmm. and carving out this little thing i mean you guys have done it i've done it I mean, in, in my mind, I look back at 12 years ago in Missoula, was there a company that specialized in high efficiency boilers and did it a, did did a really good job of making sure that the it was high quality components done in a system that works? Exactly. I mean, there were companies out there installing boilers. They don't do it like we do it. No. Oh, boy. Here we go. I'm going to put myself on a soapbox. <laughs> uh, that, but but that, I'm, what I'm going to say is, is that we have built a business that if you – we get a lot of customers that come back and say – you know, new customers that say, we're willing to give you $20,000 and we're, we're going to uh, essentially – you know, we're going to give you this $20,000, but we don't know you. Yeah. Right. We want you to do this boiler because you did this boiler, did a boiler system just and like this heard, for your neighbors and it worked really well. You're the guy well. to call. And you're the guy, that, the guy to call. A lot of that came, though, from not, from taking risk. And if I, if I, if I were the, the, myself today, there are a lot fewer things that I'm willing to take a risk on than I was then. At 30, I decided I needed to bite off a cooling tower replacement yeah. in an attorney's office. Yeah. I've given you so much crap for that over the years. That right? Was funny. That was a very stressful That's time. Do, do you know how I little, was stressed out. Do you know how little I told her about how risky this job was? <laughs> right? Like I was Fair like, enough. I sold this $130,000 job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then she was like, you have to have a 60-ton crane to pick the roof, it the cooling tower out of the roof of an attorney's office? And you're yeah, going to do this I on Saturday? I just ask a few questions and then walk away. Like, and then you're like, I don't, okay. don't want to know anymore. Yeah. Uh, but that's the thing is, as you get established, you can be like, you know what? We make money doing this and we're good at this. So we're not going to offer this anymore. Like when you're starting out, yeah, you're fixing a leaky toilet or fixing a dishwasher or garbage disposal, you can't say no to those jobs. You shouldn't say no to those jobs later on sometimes too, but you now Eric can be like, you know, I really want to specialize in boiler repair. I mm -hmm. really want to put in in-floor heat. I want to work on this radiant. And he can sort of pick and choose his jobs a little bit as you get established. Yes. But you have to do all the work to get to that point. You do. You got to take some pretty crappy jobs to... To get to the bottom of the, get to the gold, sometimes. Yeah, I agree. I, th I think it's. Neat. I think the gold is in Missoula. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're gonna go work for Mickelson no, Plumbing next. No. I'm telling you, the gold <laughs> is in blocked drains. I'm telling you, that's where the gold, <laughs> that's where the gold is. Actually, that's we where, run from those. That's uh, really what I he wanted me to do when he asked me to be the apprentice. He's like, "You can be the my drain cleaning <gasps> girl." I did you not wanted your wife to be the oh you no, are awful. I didn't say that. He's like, you could do that. That'd be a great job. It's not awful either. No. I know no, plenty I of women know. that do it and it, they're great at it. It pays. It pays. And very successful at it. I it mean pays, it pays a lot more than you think. I have, <laughs> Let me just tell you that. Right I have now. a weak stomach, so I don't I don't think it's a job for me, but no. it smells like money. <laughs> I can supervise that job. <laughs> okay. This is a cool discussion. Uh I Andy. I think I could speak for both of us. Yeah. This was pretty awesome. And thank you, ladies, for joining us. We have asked you to do this so many times. And you guys just laugh or you just change the subject. I can't believe we talked we to did you it. today. Yeah. Yeah. This is so fun for us. I feel like we were tricked a little bit today, but we'll go with it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this Maybe. happened on our wedding day, too. <laughs> <laughs> surprise there's right. podcast stuff at the dining room table oh, we're gonna do God. a show <laughs> this is so much fun 
Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening, Andy. How are they going to get a hold of us? They're going to catch us. Uh, make trades great again at gmail.com. If you got any questions, uh, we get emails every now and then. Uh, you can get us on Spotify. You can get us on Apple Podcasts. Basically, anywhere you get your download content, um, leave us a review. I mean, that's a, that's a huge help for us. Um, there's a new function. You can send us a text message. Make sure you get in on that. Shoot us a message. We'll check it out. We'll reply. Um, we anyway. won't text you back either. We're not going to no. spam you. No. So anyway. That's the let, voice you can trust. Yep. They, they know. They, you guys are laughing. <laughs> now we're doing commercials. Yeah. We're doing commercials. Yep. Yeah. We won't sell your information. No, unless not the better that comes along. <laughs> That's right. Plus there's money in it. All right. I always say, guys, I got to go. I got diarrhea. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I want everybody to say goodbye. Goodbye. Sure. Cheryl's Cheryl's like, I, can't. Too much. I can't. Cheryl says goodbye too. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>